it's astonishing to me that we've availed of so much of the value of the heart of Africa without really taking time and effort to strengthen that part of the world. It's a, it's a win-win. What do we lose by strengthening the heart of Africa? Do we have to fund the, the government there? Because I, you know, you would think that would be a requirement because you would need some stability. If you start building schools and sanitation, you would need some sort of legitimate government and policing and, you know, to have a society. Yeah, that's all part of capacity development. I mean, the, the national budget of the Congo is something around the state budget of Idaho. Okay, but it's got 50 times more people. So, you know, it's a country that's just a massive place, very poor. And when you are big, massive and poor, that leads to corruption, poor governance. Uh, they just completely lack capacity. I mean, take an Apple, I mean, or a Tesla or a Samsung or a Google, they probably make as much money in a week as the Congo spends in a year. So I'm not saying uh, it's their responsibility to run the Congo, but it's their responsibility to, to promote development, to support the communities there. Uh, and more needs to be done to support the Congolese government, to build capacity, to secure the nation. Uh, and, and things like roads, schools, infrastructure, sanitation, electrification. I mean, it all needs to be done. I, it, it's astonishing to me that we've availed of so much of the value of the heart of Africa without really taking time and effort to strengthen that part of the world. It's a, it's a win-win. What do we lose by strengthening the heart of Africa? Well, no, hold on a second. Some investors are going to have to have only two yachts instead of three. <laughs> right. I, I'm being, I, I'm being stupid, but I'm trying to, to create the, the chain of logic here because I want to you know validate it so I can understand it in, in, in my own head. The chain of logic is there's a supply chain, bad stuff's happening at the bottom. The people that make the most money and have the most money from the entire process need to step in as the big kid and say, no, that's not going to be okay. That's what needs to happen. Correct? Yeah. The demand starts at the top. So solutions have to start at the top. Demand doesn't start in the middle and it certainly doesn't start at the bottom. Okay. It starts at the top. Uh, uh, everything that has flowed, good, bad, and ugly, as a consequence of demand for cobalt, only exists because of the demand that start, starts at the top. And that's where the solutions have to start. And again, let's be clear. They already all say they're doing it. Okay, it, it, We're not telling them to do anything they don't already all claim to do in their quarterly reports, press statements, annual reports, human rights statements, and so on. They all They're say- They're saying all the way down to it coming out of the dirt. All the way down to the, to the mining level. Now, they use that word very carefully. What does mining level yeah, mean? Yeah, that's what they do, yeah. Okay, but you and I know what mining level means. Mining level means people doing the mining, okay? So uh, they all say down to the mining level, it's clean. Now. What they think they're saying, the industrial mine is okay. Mining happens in two ways in the Congo. There's industrial and artisanal. The fallacy is that those are two separate things. They're not two separate things. Uh, but what the company at the top says, that industrial mine where I buy cobalt from, that is okay. There are no children there. There's no artisanal miners there. And the cobalt coming out of that mine is not mixed with the child co mine cobalt. So that's what they mean by mining level. The truth, however, is if they, like me, were to actually go to said mine, they'd see there are children, there are women, there are uh, uh, the artisanal miners working in and around almost all those industrial mines. And they do that because it's for the mining company at the mining level, a cheap way to boost production. Pay this kid a dollar, pay her, his mother a dollar fifty and his father a dollar eighty. And you get a couple of more sacks of cobalt. Number two, all the other cobalt, like that video I showed on Rogan, all right, uh, where there's 15,000 people crammed in a pit in like some scene you might, Im might imagine from a thousand years ago. Uh, all that cobalt is going where? 
upstream into the formal supply yeah. chain. It, it's not going somewhere else. It's not going to Mars. It's not going to some other company on some other planet. It's all going into the formal supply chain, but they disown that. Okay. So mining level means all of these things, this, this thick wall that's supposed to exist between industrial and artisanal doesn't exist. And that's the value of actually getting on the ground and seeing what does mining level actually mean? Th this is what it means. It means it's all mixed together before it ever leaves the country. And at that point, you can't disaggregate what, what, what was dug out as a consequence of an excavator and what was dug out by some kid. You can't disaggregate that anymore. It's all been batched together and semi-processed together before it ever leaves the Congo. Now, the other reason why there are artisanal miners, this is uh, as a tech or a scientist, you'll appreciate this, this crucial element. Although no mining company will say we've got artisanal miners, you know, on our mind, in our minds, uh, but many of them do. The reason is, um, if you imagine how industrial mining works, big machinery, it's a bulk, high volume, low yield business. You take out mounds of dirt and there's a small amount of it that's valuable. What a, what a human can do is handpick what's valuable, stick it in a sack, and you've got a sack of valuable dirt, about uh, valuable cobalt, without all the stuff that's not valuable. So it is a low volume, high yield business. Now, it doesn't make sense economically unless you don't pay them anything or you hardly pay them anything. And you don't look after them in case they get injured. And you don't do any of the things you'd expect to do for basic human labor uh, requirements. But it does make really good sense if you only pay them a dollar or two. If they get injured, never mind. If they get killed, never mind. But you get that high yield sack of cobalt for a dollar or two, and you add that, and multiply that by tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people. And now you're talking about tens of thousands of tons of high-grade uh, cobalt that's supplemented into the formal supply chain for a de minimis cost of, of business.